Hello, Yeshua Network. Woo! -hoo! Welcome to the entire Bible read through. It's the happiest place on earth. <laughs> I, I had to. I had to do it. Oh, I have such a dark humor. <laughs> my my Mickey ears are out. Oh man. Hello, everybody. So blessed to have you guys here. Um. <laughs> Okay, real quick. Uh, if you guys don't know, we welcome you to this video series. If you don't know about it, it is a fellowship. We're not going to be reading the Bible to you. What we do is we encourage you to read the, the chapters which we post at Yeshua Official on Facebook. And then uh, we all come together and we get to talk about it. We read your comments live that are left on a graphic that we leave on the timeline. We also have at Yeshua Official on Facebook pinned to the top of the page is a resource link which has been put together by a, a few... Uh, subscribers they've done a wonderful job of putting all the videos or a majority of the videos that we've ever done together in a kind of like a search engine ability situation i'm just making up like words because it's so hard for me to talk right now um and we hope that you will go check that out because if there's any type of topic that maybe you've tried to ask somebody before wanted to hear about and uh and you feel frustrated you couldn't find it go check out that resource put in uh the, what you're looking for in the search engine and see if there's any videos uh or taught or you know uh, anything that we have here that might be able to help you because it's a resource to help you that's the point of it so we hope it we hope it serves you and it blesses you in yeshua's name amen amen um so we are kind of uh we are kind of um going through a, a change here in yeshua network um and specifically it's kind of been started with entire bible read through which is blessed that's that's actually a very good reason for there to ever be a change in a ministry um and because you're reading scripture yeah, that's good. I like that. That's actually really good. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I have to just give a quick, uh, I, I apologize, everybody, but I have to give a quick little um, explanation to something I said, which would be, if you're watching this recorded, which would be that last video you just watched of me sitting in the truck uh, talking about uh, the video that Alex and I had done where we didn't even talk about Matthew 22 or any scripture, but really talked more about digesting the... Um, the heaviness of what the scriptures are getting to and what's happening here in EBRT. So there was a sentence I said, or a few of them, I'm sure, but there was one in particular sentence I said that I think upset a lot of people. And I think it was purely a misunderstanding, not that I take back what I said, or that I think the words that I said were not true. But the thing is, is I didn't give an explanation. And me and Alex, as we often get to, we got to talking this week, and Alex pointed out this, along with a few of you, of you who also emailed me or, or messaged me uh, directly, and uh, you kind of expressed sadness for the sentence I said, and I don't mean to be prepping it so much, but I just want to explain why I'm taking this moment to, to give this explanation. So the sentence was, is that I have, like, really no earthly joys, and... It's a super complicated thing to explain. And as I was praying probably for like an hour and a half today about having this conversation with you, I realized that as I was asking the Lord to give me the words to explain it, I realized that what he has given me could potentially be a tool for many of you who, who are having the reaction you're having to this time. I feel like what I'm about to say is a tool. So I don't want you to just hear it as Nathan is explaining himself but I want you to hear it as potentially something that could be beneficial to you in your walk with the Lord. So very briefly, if you watch my uh, my Truth Me Free series on YouTube, if you don't know about that, youtube.com forward slash Truth Me Free, you'll watch something called my testimonial. In that, I talk about how when I was a kid, I was very aware of my mortality at like three years old. So much so, it was like craziness. I was a weird kid and I had to learn to find a way to interact with children or to make it seem like I was enjoying life. And it was a form of what I have come to call controlled folly. And what I did was I always imagined there was a camera there filming me. And then I could be playful and I could be silly and I could play pretend, which was really scary for me as a kid. I thought pretend was a form of psychosis. So that same muscle, if you will, has transferred over now as I became a believer in Christ now what I do is I, I will take a look at something and my flesh will be hurt by it. That should be blessing me. So for instance, again, I hope you understand that I'm not just saying this to talk about myself, but as a tool to you. So for instance, Alex can verify that what I'm about to tell you is true as well. There are times where Alex and his family will invite me over for a holiday, Jewish holiday, 
Thanksgiving type holidays, any type of holiday, right? And I will turn him down. And the reason I will turn him down is that when I'm in a family setting and I see people being friendly and loving and caring and like there's no fist flying, there's no nobody yelling or cursing, there's no threat of divorce or no threat of violence, it I you would think that, that I would be happy. But the reality is, is it makes me very unhappy. Because what it does is it reminds me of the childhood I never had. It reminds me of the family I never had. So it's really weird because it's not my conscious brain. It's a subconscious part of my brain that like goes, it's like, it's like a part that you can't control. It's, it's probably the part that I'm not a jealous person, but I imagine it's a part of like people that have jealousy. Like I've never understood jealousy, but I'm sure there's a lot of people who can't understand why I can't go to a Thanksgiving gathering and not feel like I want to blow my brains out. But that is exactly what I feel like. I feel like I don't want to be alive. I feel like I don't want to see another soul. I feel like I never want to step foot in public again. Like this is just how I feel. It's because I just don't understand why the Lord wouldn't allow me to have a family that of my own. Like why my family couldn't be sweet and nice to each other. Like why they have to literally hit, kick, punch, and curse out like 24-7 every day, all day long. I couldn't understand this. So, so we did have laughs and we did have good times, but every holiday was like a 50-50 mix. So in all reality, when you think back on these things, you think back of the negative. You don't really think back on the jokes. You don't think about the laughter because the the heavy and the dark scars more, right? It leaves more of an impression on you. So now that you understand, like when I say that I don't have like earthly joys, it's because anytime I see something or experience something that normally people are like, this is pleasant, it actually triggers a dark side of me because it makes me feel like, why can't I have that? Why can't I have joy in that like other humans do? Why do happy things make me depressed? So that's another reason why I'm actually a pretty big hermit, which also Alex can confirm. Um, so, so the thing is, is that when I finally have the strength to come out and hang out, like with even with Alex and his family who are like absolutely my real family to me, and, and he will tell you, even like to this day, he just invited me over the other day to a, to a holiday and I told him no, and I told him why. It was for this reason. I was like, I just can't really handle it. It's, I need to not, I just can't participate in it. So, so in order for me to function in life, I have learned through my walk, through reading the Bible to do something that's along the same lines as what I did when I was a kid, when I imagined there was a camera and I was like, okay, just pretend you're an actor, just pretend you're on a movie set and there's a director saying action. So when the kids say drink from this fake teacup, just pretend you're in a movie so that way you're not crazy. So then when I go to like, a, a like let's just say, hang out with Alex and his friends and I explain this to Alex and he kind of took offense to this. And, and I feel like this is why I wanna explain this to you guys because he got to actually hear the full explanation. He was like, so what you're saying is, is that everything you do, like all the happiness and all the good stuff you do is fake and it actually is hurting you. And so our friendship is not real. Like you actually aren't like really my friend. You're just controlled falling being my friend. And I, I, I perceive there's a couple of people that responded to me this way and was just like, wow, like baptisms or the meetup or those times where you're happy, like those don't bring you joy either. I, so I, I, I hope this is all making sense and I'm going to get to how I, how I deal with this and what, what happens with me. What I do is I try my very best in every situation to take a look at everything as kind of a blessing that God is handing me, right? So with Alex, I perceive him as a friend that's literally sitting in God's hands and God is like sticking him out towards me. And he's saying, here, I'm giving you Alex. So then I'm not looking at Alex and his family like a family on earth that has something I've never had and never probably will have. Instead, I'm looking at Alex as literally a gift directly from God into my life. And so when I have joy about Alex, it's a godly, it's a heavenly joy. So when I said in the video that I have no earthly joys, I, I wasn't lying. But I have to trick my mind into perceiving everything that even like normal stuff, like the roof over my head or the bed that I sleep in or the food that I eat, like you wouldn't believe like every time I go and I spend money to buy groceries, it's like somebody sticking a sword in my back because it's like, it's like this money that I'm buying this with is from donations because I'm 
my what my brain is telling me is because I'm so much of a loser, and because I I'm I I'm, my businesses weren't successful, or now I'm here and I'm doing this instead of doing business. Uh, and even though this is a calling from the Lord, it's my flesh. Like, do you understand? Like, it's not me. It's that's my flesh. And even though that is me, but it's not the real me because the real me is not that really hurt, arrogant, selfish, prideful person. The real me is the person who's sitting there surrendering to the Lord, and then I receive that meal, or I receive my roof over my head, or the clothes on my back, or the bed that I sleep in, as like I said, I imagine it as it's something in Yeshua's hand, and he's handing it to me. And so then it becomes the most beautiful, most amazing thing in the whole world. And it's and it's and it's a love and a joy that cannot be stolen from me. And and it's like this is the real joy. So it's not it's not the flesh joy, which is like, well, I like my bed so long as my springs stay up, or I like my roof so long as it doesn't spring a leak and start raining on me. Like it's not a contingent upon its val earthly value. Do you understand? So in the video when I said this, I know it triggered a whole bunch of you. It triggered Alex, it triggered other people who literally wrote me directly being like, you know, oh, gee, well, I'm sorry that I ever asked you to baptize me. Oh, gee, I'm sorry I ever, you know, ha had asked you all those questions. I didn't, I didn't realize that it was, you know, that, that this wasn't a joy for you to be a part of this fellowship with us. Like, people were really hurt by it. And I'm like, well, you just don't understand. Like, I am a human being just like anybody else. I, I hope I've never translated it other ways or spoken it otherwise. But the thing is, is I'm weird. And I've been saying I'm weird from literally the very first second of my very first testimonial video. And this is how I function in the world. This is how I've learned to function in the world as a kid and now as an adult. And so when I say that I love you guys, when I say that I'm super blessed to be a part of any baptism or any event, like, sure, it happens on earth, but to me, it doesn't. To me, that's happening in paradise with Yeshua. So... Like it really is happening for me on the other side, because if I allow myself to experience it here on earth, it will trigger all my flesh and all my mess ups and all my psychological dramas. So I hope that this makes sense. I hope it ties together. I hope that you can see it as maybe a tool for yourself. If there are things in your life where you're like, I should be happy, but I'm not able to be happy. Maybe you could try this technique. I realize it might be a blessing for other people, especially as you might be saying to yourself as a couple of 50 or so of you have written me and you're saying, hey, Nathan, if it's the end of the world, then why should I even try? If it's the end of the world, why should I even care? If it's the end of the world, then why should I even put forth the effort? And it's just like, I've been saying to you, I don't know how to answer that question. But in reality, I do know how to answer it. It's not just the surrender, which I've said a thousand times. It's a, it's a perceive whatever is happening to you at that moment not as something that's happening to you. Perceive it as something that Yeshua himself is kind of like allocating towards you. He is actually entrusting to you. He, he has said, I have literally born you into this world so that at this moment, even if it's an unpleasant thing or it's a pleasant thing, but it's triggering you, you have to understand that Yeshua wants you to have that experience. He wants you to be the one who goes through it because there's something he's doing in that. And if you truly like allow your mind to step back, like I said, I see my life through like windows through my eyes rather than from my eyes. If you allow yourself to step back and kind of watch the world, then you'll be able to have that pause and you'll be able to say, so right now I'm experiencing this thing. I'm triggered. I'm mad. I'm angry. I'm upset. I hate it. I want to die. I want to give up. I want to throw in the towel. I'm confused. All the emotions that us humans feel. But if you sit there and you look at it as like, there is absolutely no possible way that I'm living in this time, on this day, in this second, in this scenario, unless it was because Christ wanted me to be here. So why am I here? What is this to him, to me? And everything changes. Like the whole world changes. So I wanted to give you that explanation because that's literally how I, I do try to live. And I'm not ever saying I'm perfect, you guys, and I'm not ever saying I don't have battles with my flesh. All the contrary. And if you've done the 40-Day Holiness Challenge, what you will learn in that, and I only bring that up again and again, is because it, it, it the full explanation of anything in regards to all this will be better explained in that because it's an experience. But the, the thing that I'm saying is, is that like, what ends up happening is that 
It's not that your flesh ever goes away, just as Yeshua's flesh was what was sweating blood in the garden, right? Our flesh will always have fears. It will always have anxieties, even to the point where we're bleeding or sweating blood. I think a lot of us think that there's going to be a day where we'll be like this guru cartoon that like flies through the air. And whenever like the big bad demon looks at us, we'll be Nero and Matrix or Neo and Matrix. And we'll just be like in kind of like a zony face with no fear, no emotion, just put up our hand and like the bullets will stop. And we think that like there's going to be some kind of switch that goes on in us. But that's if if that didn't happen with Yeshua. Why do any of us how do any of us come to this conclusion? It's Hollywood movies. It's TV shows, it's books. Like that's it didn't even happen to Yeshua. It's never going to happen to us, right? So what what it is though is is that even though we're having so much fear, so much anxiety, and even though the world triggers us so much, it is be, it is by our faith and our ability to step back and say you come in, you handle this Lord for me cuz I got nothing. It's a perpetual situation and then he will take it. God will take it. And I feel like some of you need to also hear that too. I think some of us are hearing, at least when I'm speaking or in the videos I've done recently, like, so Nathan, you're pretty much like saying, it's the end of the world. You're all screwed. Good luck. Goodbye. Or whatever you, you're hearing. But that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that it is the end of the world in the not so distant future, whatever that may be. I'm not giving dates or times. It is the end of the world. But the thing is, is that just as the Lord brought Yeshua from that garden where he was sweating blood onto the cross and then onto the resurrection, if we too surrender, however Yeshua was able to do that, we too will be able to do that. It has everything to do with, though, telling this flesh to shut up, to put it aside, not that it ever will shut up, but to push it aside and we make room for the Holy Spirit. And it is forever, every second, every day, all day long. It never goes away. So so I hope that this is the part that I didn't explain in the car and the truck video because I, I felt that a lot of people would understand this. But then it was also brought to me by brothers and sisters in the ministry. Nathan, there's a lot of new people that haven't seen those videos. So I thought I would. it was important for me to do this at the beginning of this video since that's part of the entire Bible read-through series. So I appreciate you allowing me the time I've said what I, I feel it was need to be said. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and thank you guys for your comments. These are wonderful, uplifting, and, and you know, loving comments that you're putting out. A lot of people saying, I get it. I understand you. This is why I trust you. Um, I You're not alone. I agree. I feel this way too. So there's just a ton of... A ton of agreement and understanding, I feel, from you guys. Hallelujah. Thanks, guys. Um, I'll read them later. I can't read them now because we're doing this. but And I was talking, so I didn't want to get distracted. But I appreciate um, it. I'll read them later. But I just want you to know I've been kind of keeping an eye on them. And they're all like that. Okay. Uh, people are in agreement. And and I want to say I'm in agreement, too. So, um, so thank you. Praise the Lord. All right. Um, I hope you guys are ready for Matthew 22. Um, we're just going to segue into that because we don't want to fall too far behind. Yep. Uh, there's probably a ton to still digest and talk about, but that'll continue. Yeah, I will. Because this fellowship will continue. Yep. So um, uh, our first comment today is from Antonio Di Donato. I believe this might be the first time I've read your name, Antonio. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for commenting. Um, and the comment is, after hearing the last two videos, reality has brought me back to shore. This flesh has a way of putting aside the truth and getting all drugged up on ways of this on the ways of this world. Moving up in the job, the house, the car, the F1 races, etc. The sad part is that I'm aware and know full well what's coming with no ambiguity, yet I manage to get sidetracked with useless nonsense. God forgive me for that. The last two videos have been a proverbial couple of smacks in the face, and for that I thank you. I'm back and ready to get the soul ready best I can. The flesh, too, best I can, considering what's, what's coming in the circumstances. Nate, I love you, brother. I know you can't wait to die. You're just going to have to hang in there a little longer, but I feel you. My flesh is scared for what's coming. Alex, peace of the Lord be with you. Love mm -hmm. you, too. 
you're in good company and I'm in the same boat sometimes. But there is a reason why the Lord put me on this earth at this time. Hope I can be a blessing somehow to someone. See you at 6 p.m. Mountain Time. It's like you and Antonio talked before the before the video started. I know. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. Hallelujah, man. So this is how God works, you guys. This is. See? We're, this is we're, how God works. We're literally all going through this together. This is, this is what a body of Christ is supposed to look like. If you think about it, Based on these comments and what we're hearing, we're really starting to move into be of one mind and one spirit. Don't you feel that? Yes. I'm beginning but you to... gotta you gotta push the crud out of each of us individually. Yeah. Have to push the crud out so that we can come as empty vessels, be filled with Him, because He will only be, only He can be, the true oneness. Right. Right. Because He's the only thing consistent. The rest of us are infinitely variable. Right. Right. So only when we all take away our, our crud, which is perpetually a struggle, as I was saying, but then we move out of the way and he's in us, then we, as one body, will be one mind and one spirit. It will be his mind and it will be his spirit. And it is possible. And we together encourage each other. Hey, keep pushing that crud. Well, good. You keep pushing the crud too. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And we, we had a push the crud out of the way talk today before early in the afternoon. Not before the video, but early in the afternoon. And, we, and you have to accept it. You have to hear from your brothers and sisters when they're giving you an encouraging word of, hey, I see some crud, push it out. Hey, I see something that might be, you know, messing with your joy or messing with your focus. Let's, let's call it that, your walk, right? Push it out. And he's like, yeah, you know what? Thank you for pointing that out to me. Shut up, devil. St shut up, flesh. Get out of here. Hallelujah. Okay, so yeah, it, it, you know, just like it, you know, Yeshua was teaching. Uh, if there's a thing you've got against your brother, mm -hmm. go deal with it right away. Don't do anything else. Deal with it right away. Exactly. And um, you know, it's it's there's infinite rewards at practicing that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm finding. Um, then then there's infinite pitfalls at harboring and holding oh. on and hiding and holding on until your opportune moment to go bring it out because you feel like now's the time. Uh, that, that like is a recipe for a lot of pain for everybody involved. It's like a domino of pain. Yeah. Pain. Domino effect. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. yeah. So. Good holy. stuff. Holy. You want to read that one? Mary? Mm -hmm. Uh, most comments on Matthew 22 were posted before the general conversation video about the purpose of the EVRT being more experience based. Uh, conversation and fellowship rather than intellectual based comments. It would be helpful to me and probably to other people who also post irregularly if you could help highlight any comments that really illustrate this or give. Man, I got the burps. I have no idea why. They always joke about how we get the. I like not burping all day long. Sorry. Yeah, I, just, I, I got one. Only when right I when do you, videos. What's going on with you us? You started burping and I wanted to let one out too. And I usually sneeze too. Okay. If you could help highlight any comments that really illustrate this or give any good examples of the type of comments you hope to see in the EBRT so that we can start steering our comments and thus the conversation to that direction, I think this would be really helpful for us moving forward. Well, Mary, that was one of them. It's not knowledge base, and you're just kind of talking about the fellowship. But I will continue to highlight them, uh, and I will continue to bring them up. But honestly, the first two comments we've read so far, even though like no scripture was necessarily mentioned, these are totally EBRT welcoming comments. So it's not. I don't want people to think like these type of comments are only welcomed because of the last two videos. This is welcomed every time. Like, how is reading the Bible? How is your experience affecting you? Those are always welcome. So we'll keep reading and I'll highlight them and I'll keep hitting the microphone because I know it probably here is great on your guys' side. So, <laughs> um, Jean Conrad Lucier. Hope I got your name right. Lucier? Lucier? Lucier. I don't know. You speak multiple languages. Probably uh, right. I don't know. I don't know what I speak anymore. Um, the wedding feast parable just reminded me of something that happened at my own wedding. Hmm. I asked one of my best friends to be a bridesmaid and she said, Yes, but she refused to wear the dress I picked out, and also she wanted to wear uh, ripped fishnet stockings. We were punk rockers back in the day. <laughs> so I told her she couldn't be in the wedding. All the other girls were wearing the bridesmaid's dresses I picked out. She ended up not even coming to the wedding at all. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. Uh, that, that day I found out she was not a true friend. She had always been someone who challenged my faith and carried what I considered demonic energy. Looking back, I can see now that God was weeding her out of my life, just as he's weeding people from his wedding table that refuse and disrespect his ways. 
Yeshua spoke in parables and in the, in, in the way he speaks to us today through our experiences. Those with ears to hear will understand them. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Well, there's there's another comment that is totally yep. based in testimony. Yeah. Uh, Referred to scripture. Yeah. So Story wise. Yeah. It's like, perfect. And enriching to all of us because, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm finding more and more uh, through this process, especially lately, because really focusing on it has helped kind of really focus on it. Uh, is that that's when we're most blessed is when we hear the faith and the walk of another believer and their strength and their joy helps us it bolsters us because mm -hmm. like my brother says no matter how much you've tasted the holy ghost and i suspect my brother here has tasted it not you know not a small amount um your flesh is still there right there always to beat you down mm -hmm. and so when other believers are fellowshipping with you i mean that's what we've enjoyed here in the ebrt just us being coming together excited about the bible has lifted us up um and 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 it's important and so these comments that may sound and i'm guilty of that myself uh i will often edit comments out of my head that don't sound like they have some understanding or intellectual value but I'm actually realizing, thanks to my brother's insistence, that uh, it's the comments where I'm just telling you how I feel and how confused I am that are help more helpful so, uh, than perhaps the comments where I think I have some brilliant ideas. So I'm working on that too, guys, and, and I find it to be a blessing to be working on that. Awesome. Uh, Vicky. Okay, so Mary, that, and that was a great, great example. So of, of like, just, and it doesn't, you know, again, if you find something in like a Strong's concordant or, 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 or translation or something, and you want to highlight the, you know, the original word, because it brings depth or understanding great, but also bring a testimony of how that spoke to you. You see what I mean? So bring the knowledge, but then express to us how that knowledge affected your walk, how it affected your relationship with the Lord in that moment. You know, be, and the reason is, is just like you did with your wedding. I think one of the things that so many people who read the Bible do is they read the Bible and they go, well, this is all great for people 2000 years ago. I live in the modern world. This has no application to me. There's nobody with weddings and people walking by being like, will you come in? That would never happen in the modern world. Very true. But you see how there is a scenario where somebody shared with us. And now we're like, wow, that makes total sense in a modern application. Right. And so yeah. how the Lord works in us and how maybe only one of us out of 10,000 will the Lord choose to give a life situation of one particular scripture. But because all 10,000 of us are together, that one person's experience that the Lord anointed them, whether it was a good or bad experience, was what I was saying at the beginning of this video. See everything like God's like, I want you to experience this. Why does he want us to experience everything? You heard me say it a thousand times. Testimony, testimony, testimony. If we testify, what the Lord does in our life doesn't belong to us. It becomes a tool that the Lord uses to bless thousands of people. So that this is a perfect example of it. So Mary Rainey, 2221. And Yeshua answered them and spoke to them again by parable, saying, This verse introduces the parable of the wedding feast. It specifically points out that he is answering them and that he is speaking again, which is an indication that this is a stream of thought continuing from the last conversation happening at the end of Matthew 21. I think it's important to notice these words when trying to interpret this passage. They are two key points within the passage that I think are key things to think about. Number one, the wedding garments that one must be wearing at the wedding in order to not end up being rejected by the king. What are the wedding garments? What do they represent? How do you get them? There are lots of scriptures that reference wedding garments in other parts of the Bible, which hopefully others will elaborate on. But I will just focus on this point. The parable seems to be continuation of the same themes from the end of Matthew 21, such as the parable of the two sons, one son who claimed that he would do what his father asked him uh, to do, but didn't actually do it, i.e. the religious leaders, and the son who didn't have the pretense of doing what the father had asked, but ended up doing it anyway. The common people who responded to Yeshua had a heart change, such as Peter and the other disciples. The other parable at the end of Matthew 21 was the parable of the wicked vine dressers, where again, which uh, wicked religious leaders, where again, were 
wicked religious leaders were in, who were in charge. And they actually killed the servant that God sent, eventually even his son. Yeshua also says in Matthew 21, 42, directly to the Pharisees, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Uh, BibleTools.org states the custom in the, can you scroll it up because the microphone's in the way, oh, sorry. sorry. Perfect, thanks. Uh, BibleTools.com states that the customs of those days was that for one hosting the wedding feast to provide garments for the wedding guests. With all of this in mind, I read this parable seeing that the wedding garment that guests must be wearing is provided by God himself. It is the righteousness that comes out through faith and relationship with Yeshua, who is truth. If someone is merely religious and tries to get into the wedding without this garment, he will be rejected by the king. He will not belong. All a person has to do is show up and receive what God freely provided. What more could the king do if the person doesn't respond to this level of grace? Very good point. Number two, the concluding statement, many are called, but few are chosen, could be a scary statement depending on how you interpret it. So what does it mean? Again, many guests were invited to the wedding, but many simply didn't respond to the invitation. They thought too lightly of it. They were too busy. The, the, they disrespect the king. They were the called ones. However, the chosen ones seem to be those who simply responded to the invitation and wore the wedding garment provided by the king. I think that the Greek word elect translates as chosen, sometimes trips people up because it's implication. For an English language perspective, is that God is just picking certain people. Yeah. Perhaps its meaning is actually the other way around, and it's the people who choose to respond to God's call and put on the wedding garments that he provides. Throughout the scriptures, Yahweh gives imperative commands, for example, repent. I don't think that he would bother to do that if people didn't have the ability to make a choice to respond to his command or not. I don't think there would be robots just playing out some predetermined destiny, so some people suppose... Uh, as some people suppose through their man-made doctrines. We have a choice to respond, and that choice determines our destiny. Amen. Okay, and then somebody... Who's the responder, though? Um, oh, that, that, that's deleted. I'm not sure who it is. It might be Lynn, because it oh, looks okay. like Lynn... Get, yeah, it might be Lynn. Okay. Uh, they say, I also have heard in once... Uh, I've also heard... It, Wait, I don't know what I have also say. heard in I once heard okay, as it's double. Okay. I once heard in a why don't I read yeah. that that way? I once heard in a sorry you can rest. Thanks. <laughs> I once heard in a sermon that in ancient times the wedding garment was given by the bridegroom. One who didn't have the clothes would mean he wasn't invited. I don't know if it was like that, but the understanding I have is that the clothing is clothing of the Holy Spirit. In Genesis it shows that the Holy Spirit covered the face of the waters. Genesis 1 2, just as the Lord said, the Holy Spirit was upon him. Luke 4 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty the oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Just as the Holy Spirit rested on the Lord like a dove, we have lost our garment of the Holy Spirit because of sin. And that's what I understand, the nakedness of Adam and Eve. Hmm. And they sought to cover with fig leaves a nakedness that was in the spirit, and they tried to cover themselves with self with self justice. And the Lord covered them with skins, which indicated the sacrifice of the lamb, which covers our sin. I understand that the garment are the garments made of the Lord, of his perfect righteousness on the cross. The fact that the good and the bad were gathered together in the subject without the bridal garment was kicked out shows that the nature of the invitation is totally based on the one who wears it and not on the clothing, spirit of the guest. Or nature. Maybe. Yeah, or nature, yeah. Nature of the guest, like what their character is as a human. Uh, without the bridal. Yeah, okay. Right. And, yeah, and that the election... Election is being in Christ. From this stems a great theological debate about free will, which is what Mar Mary mentioned up above. Calvinist, uh, Calvinist versus, versus, Arminian, versus Arminian. Arminian. Yeah. But what I understand is neither Calvino nor Arminio. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I understand that the Holy Spirit seeks to convince our spirit all the time, and that the choice was solely and exclusively His. 
for he is the one who reconciled us to him, and that is the nature of the Father. However, at a certain moment, the Spirit receives the Holy Spirit, and this receiving has manifestations in the whole being, including the soul, which needs to be dealt with from sin. The robotization issue doesn't exist, and many think the, that the fact that God chooses some is being unfair to others, but what I get is that the subject does not consider the layers of our being. Like, how am I going to choose if I don't see God? The thing is, we all see Him in, in the Spirit. The soul that perseveres is the one that has salvation in the Spirit, who received Yeshua. God saves, uh, in parentheses, because that's what Yeshua means, as Savior. That is really good, Lynn. Or whoever wrote that. Whoever wrote that, because we don't really know. We don't. It might be Lynn. Um, or really might be, There's or a lot there. Rainy, or might be Mary. I might, I might, yeah, whoever, if Mary, if you wrote that as like kind of a follow-up to yourself, then that's, uh, either way, whoever wrote that is really good. I would recommend people, because especially since I read some, of it, or Alex read some of it too, and just reread it again, because I, I, or hear it again, because I think there's a lot to that. I really think there's a lot of like really good stuff in, in all, in this whole conversation. This is good. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. You want me to read the rest here? I'll finish it. Wow, really good insights. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Sarah Peterson says, great insight, Mary. I was pondering all the same things. I wanted to give a comment on your reference to the chosen word that may be of interest to you. I did some studying a few months ago in the Greek word uh, ekliktos, ekliktos, which is usually translated to elect in the New Testament, is not translated to the word elect when used in the Old Testament. When used in the Septuagint Greek Old Testament, it is often translated to pure or quality in English. It could also be taught of as the best. Some references include uh, Exodus 30, 23, mm. where the word eklikdios is translated to quality or pure when referring to the spices. When ref when, when referred so to instead of chosen, it's, it's more like choice, right? Like choice, choice diamonds like, versus uh, chosen diamonds, right? Choice diamonds, yeah, yeah. or like the choice olives, like the best, yeah, the, best. the best wine yeah. or whatever, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's good, good, good. Like further explanation and more yeah. even modern. Well, that helps terms. me actually because the word chosen. I agree with uh, Mary, and and I think Mary is saying or somebody is saying it might have been mono. Mm. who replied so thank you mono for the reply she says she's gonna reply to herself okay yeah. <laughs> good deal um we just uh, missed i often name. do i often reply to myself hello i talk to myself all the time <laughs> so um but my point is that the the word chosen if does choice. cause a, a, like a thing where you're like oh gosh I, I, I hope i'm chosen you know it's like who's getting picked for the for the uh you know the um mm. the basketball game you know what? What are they? The pickup basketball game. Who's gonna get chosen first? Who's gonna get chosen last? Means you're probably not the best player or something. Those feelings we have all of those feelings, and the word chosen can spring up a bunch of that stuff. And it's so awesome that you guys are honing in on that word, and you're like, let's investigate. What does it actually mean? And you're blessing us with with your investigation. You're blessing me. Awesome. Uh, so continue reading the quality pure reference spice. Okay. In 2 Kings 8.12, the word is translated to young, when referring to young men or guys in their prime. Also in Isaiah 54.12, the word uh, klektios is translated to precious, prefer, uh, referring to precious stones. So when the word klektios is used in the New Testament, I like to think of it as meaning those who are pure or those who are righteous because of Yeshua's sacrifice. Just a different perspective, perspective on the Greek word there that I found that might be helpful. That's awesome, Sarah. Thank you for that. <laughs> and I see a lot of people are vibing with that. I mean, I see Karen says that's very helpful regarding the word chosen. Thank you. Um, some live comments? Should sure, yeah, go for it. Re it. Ricardo says, when I read it, or when I read it, it felt like the wedding garment is baptism born again. Uh, this verse reminded me when Yeshua said to Nicodemus that no one can enter the kingdom of heaven unless is born again in water and in spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good too, Ricardo. Absolutely. Yeah. And then he talks about the old wine skin and the new wine skin and how, or and the new wine and you can't put them together or the wine or it will burst. So yeah. there's a lot of obviously uh overlay lap lap over 
overlap overlap what's wrong with lap me? over i do i'm this is brain good fried. yeah you like it when i'm brain fried. <laughs> ah, it's, i know that i didn't when we, when we start getting brain fried I, there's you know two things are happening. coming either something good's gonna happen or we're just super silly is about to go down silly. yeah one of the two is that what you're gonna They're, say super yeah silly? super silly obviously yeah. I'm glad you said that. Oh, I'll read this one. Go ahead. <laughs> There's that silly. <laughs> you yeah. can, you, whatever. Lindy, Matthew yeah, 22, 3. And he sent his servant to call those who were invited to the wedding feast, but they would not come. The nation of Israel? I'm persuaded that that's what he's talking. He's Because he's saying it in front of the Sadducees and Pharisees and stuff. I'm under the persuasion that's what he's meaning. Yeah. Yeah. And, or at least the Pharisees, or at least the pr clergy. Yeah. That he's... You know, smacking them a little smacking bit, smacking them, giving them a little sass, a little Irish sass before <laughs> Ireland was a thing. Um, uh, you guys have so many great lifetime comments. We love you too. Um, I I don't want to get sidetracked from we're now in the chapters or in the scriptures. Um, I can go back and read them too if there's some. Okay. I'll go back and read them too because I know I didn't read any for the beginning part. So. All right. Super cool. Good stuff, you guys. We appreciate um, them. We do. Uh, Lynn continues, Matthew 22, 4. Again, he sent other servants saying, tell those who are invited. Tell those who are invited. See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. What is the symbolism of oxen and calves? The strongs for fatlings, calves, citistos, Citistos, from a derivative of Greek 4621, grained, that is, fatted, fatling, uh, is the plural irregular neuter of the first form of uncertain derivation, grain, especially wheat, corn, corn wheat. Um, but she keeps writing. Okay. Maybe there's more. Well, no. Because it's th the next passage. Well, the oh, question ahead, is, what? what is the symbolism of oxen and calves? Good question. I'm not really sure. I, I mean, I just read it as this is going to be a mega wedding. Like, it's going to be the party to be at in the ancient world, right? You're going to have the best food, all the best, all the choice animals have been prepared, all the choice foods have been prepared. Well, okay. I think you just nailed it. Sarah, was it? Had brought up the, the word choice? Choice. Yeah. Right? Okay, and then who's the one, what is the one that gets sacrificed? What is the one that gets slaughtered and killed? Not the ugly one, not the broken one, not the one that's... No, you can't do the broken ones. You have to give the firstborn, uh, the, 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 the good one. Right. Or the so, red heifer. Right. Really. So how many of us as believers, when we like feel like we're totally going hardcore, really trying to find the Lord and really trying to get there to be close to Him, we feel like we end up being the ones who get slaughtered by life, by circumstances, by family and friends, like, and we're going, why, Lord, why are you doing this to me? I'm seeking you. I'm going after you. Like, we have these moments where we get all fattened up in the spirit. We get all full of joy. And then, like, life just totally kicks our backside. I mean, I know that never happens to you guys, but I'll just speak on in my own testimony, I guess. And then we go, Lord, why are you doing this to us? And, I mean, there it is. Now, does that also have a symbolism to Yeshua? I think it is. But... But I think it's also symbolic onto us. Like, he does say you will be hated. You will be cursed. Or not cursed. You will be hated. You will be... Uh, what's why I'm blanking? Uh, uh, oppressed, maybe? Yeah. For my namesake? Persecuted. Persecuted. Yeah, for my namesake and stuff. Like, And you've been killed for my namesake. So, ties in for me. Especially with the word choice like that. Right? Oh, I, I put in that word. No, she did where no 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 i'm saying in the oh description oh, in the, oh oh i see in the description part i'm saying in i'm the, saying in put this, the two together i see i see Sorry. and this now makes sense why would the sure choice of calf, yes i mean the choice of all choice calves are the ones that they would do for the wedding it's going to be the fattest calf it's going to be the one that's the most kosher that's true you see my point they don't that's they're not true. going to say like oh don't do the the best calf yeah because we like that one they're going to go no get the best calf and then and then they don't like put it on a pedestal and put a ribbon around its neck and prayed it around town going, look how great it is. And that's how we feel that we should, right? We feel like when we're totally holy rolling and doing right and we're seeking the Lord, we feel like God should put us on this pedestal and parade us around the earth going, look at my great, wonderful children. Instead, he takes us to the wedding festival and he slaughters us and everybody takes a piece of us. Symbolic to me, man. 
speaks to my life. I don't know about you guys. Oh, forgive my laughter. It's just. Am I right? Uh, I I think I think I I maybe I, I'm just projecting. It could be that. But I'm listen, confessing. symbolically speaking, let's just say symbolically yes. speaking, I'm picking up on what you're laying down, and I don't disagree. So, you know, I, I'm not what I what I really like about what just what you guys have just shared with us and helped us see is the really the idea of the precious and the choice, um, not being a predetermined thing where it, it is in fact now the now the sentence really truly makes sense because before before we hear we used to hear all are called few are chosen mm -hmm. it sounds like okay so if everybody hears the call and then but only a few are going to be chosen what's the point of those who heard the call they're not going to be chosen it just it starts to kind of sound exclusionary and a little like i don't understand what is their predetermined thing here but if all are called but few are choice are precious or meaning they absorbed yeah the nutrition so, or the fat exactly so yeah. so all grain is grown right few grains sprout fewer grains sprout the really delicious fruit so all calves and oxen are born mm -hmm. but not all of them are born blemish free and are just have the best ta best tasting meat so yeah. and karen has a live comment i think gets it too slaughter Well, slaughters to serve the people. So that's the other thing. Yeah. We get slaughtered to become a sacrifice to bless others or to fill others or to give nutrition onto others. I'm seeing a lot of symbolism. I just got to be honest. Well, it's really good. If I may, it makes me think of Paul, or who exactly. used to be Saul. Yeah. It was the sacrifice and the, the it was the, it was the, the, the Christians that he had a hand in condemning. Mm hmm that drove him so deeply to never give up on being the best you know apostle he could be mm -hmm. um so we gather yeah i mean it was actually it, when it, unfortunately it, i think it could be said that those moments of like he wished he could always take away are also moments that actually fueled the power of his faith and the power of his walk and the and the tenacity of his walk yeah amen I mean, I'm persuaded. That's so, guess. so those Christians who were sacrificed, you know, using the quotes for our analogy, right, or or slaughtered, uh, actually brought Paul into the faith. Wait, what? So somebody said, or you said, um, <laughs> somebody said, or you just said that um, the that the sacrifice of you just read it to serve the people slaughters. The slaughter is to serve the people. Yeah. Well, the slaughter of those Christians at the early part, let's say, or uh, during Paul's walk as Saul, served the people because Saul was transformed into Paul and was driven by his, you know, I guess, very much driven also by his guilt for what he had done. So by their death did serve the people because look at the fruits that Paul brought to uh to the Bible and, and to everybody's walk. That's my point, is that their, hear death, saying. their want... death was not in vain, is what I'm saying. I, I hear what you're saying. I just want to add something, though, just because there's like a huge part you're just not talking and not, not, not they may not know about, but I'm just, I want to throw it in there. That's all. Yeah. He did what he did because literally Christ revealed himself to him on the way to Damascus, blinded him, took off the scales, and said, You have to do this. Right. And he said, Who are you? And then he's like, I'm the one you're persecuting. So that's why he did it. But then the fuel, he like of his own drive, could have been fueled by the guilt that he did for well, like, wow, oh my gosh, I've been persecuting these true believers. Right. Yeah, I just want to yeah, say yeah. because you said that it brought him to to his faith. No, no, it was it was it was not. A, it didn't bring him to his faith. Christ revealed it to him. But the end of that sentence. I know. I'm just I throwing it in there. As you didn't. Yeah. See, just that's it. I'm just clausing. Yeah, Surgeon yeah. General warning. That's it. I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with you. Okay. I get it. Yeah, yeah people are. It looks like they're picking up on that idea. Yeah, it's good. Um, um, but yeah, that that which we see is sometimes our curse or our hardships often fuel us or yeah. often become our testimony. Yeah, 
And that testimony ends up allowing people to relate to us or to also be inspired by what the Lord did in us. And therefore, they have faith that the Lord can do something in them. It doesn't have to yes. be the same thing, You're but right. just something, right? Right. Like we, many of us will read Paul or Peter or James or any of those guys, right? And we'll be like, well, I'm not this guy, but I'm inspired by what he did through him. I mean, if I could get 1% or 10% of what God gave them in experience wise, I'd be pretty remarkable. So yeah. it inspires, right? That's yes, a, it does. It's very important for sure. Yeah. And it totally ties in with the analogy of the, the slaughter feeds the serves serve the services the of people. food. Yeah, exactly. Um, Sarah says, yeah, the whole chosen word really was tripping my husband up mm. and I up. I think seeing it in the original language has really helped us with interpreting stuff in the Bible a little better. So much confusion from church people is finally becoming more clear on the, quote, elect and chosen stuff, LOL, which was motivated by EBRT to look up what the real word meant. So thanks, fam. Well, thank you, Sarah. Your your work there blessed us. Amen. Um, Teamwork make that holy dream work. That's oh. right. That's right. <laughs> Cool. Good stuff. Go Where are we? 25, 20 yeah. through, through six? Mm -hmm. A Lindy, but they put the, but they paid no attention and went off on to his farm and another to his business while the rest seized his servants, th treated them shamefully and killed them. Uh, this reminds me of what is currently happening today and in Noah's days. For some specifically living here in the west coast of the u.s everyone seems to be busy with their goals checklists the next come up trends and others it's yeah i think everyone should believe whatever they want to believe and respect everyone's religions i just think that that there's many deities you could choose from and others it's i don't believe in any of that stuff so she's saying what the normal vernacular yeah. is going out right now is like basically that new age just whatever you want it's cool we're all good. Everybody's going to heaven. Yay. And yeah. So you see how that ties in. Yeah. Since an interesting application once again. Thank you, Lynn. That was good. Mm -hmm. Monos. Oh, he's bringing up Psalms. Uh, Psalms 44, 22. Yeah, thy sake are we killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nail on the head, bravo, mono, a way to bring the scripture to wrap that package up with a bow tie. Bow tie? With a tie? With a tie. With a tie? That's perfect. Oh, yeah. No. Psalms 44, 22. That's, Listen, a, that's an interesting number. No. 44, 22. 22. Wow. wow, that's really good, actually. Yeah. You got to love the Psalms. I love Psalms. I met somebody once who said they fell asleep. I you fell asleep get past the Psalms. before the blessing of the EBRT. <laughs> I fell asleep during the Psalms. And I said, dude, it's got to be spiritual because that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And it you, didn't. And then well, when we read it, it together. Now. Oh, man. It does now. It didn't then. Yeah. 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 It makes sense now. Sure. Yeah. yeah. You were but like, yeah, it's spiritual. It totally was spiritual. Yeah. But like the, 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 ble the blessing of how prophetic those songs and poems are. Oh. And like just this one right here, because. You know, it wasn't so much the expectation of faithful Israel that they would be slaughtered as sheep. It was their expectation that at some point, the Lord Almighty God or Michael, his servant, would show up and smite their enemies. Exactly. It wasn't there. It wasn't meant in their minds, at the very least, for them to have this experience, which is totally like a New Testament experience. It's, it's, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So the fact that it's all the way there in the Psalms and other things that obviously Yeshua brings up. Um, it's just well it's interesting you say that just real quick if you do think about it soapbox very small if you do think about it israel was fattened with real experiences of the lord manifestations of the lord anointings and giftings and protections and victories like i mean he just fattened them up as a as a people right and then it it corrupted them like it, it that's it's not the word I'm it's what's the word I'm looking for? Not corrupted, but it like tainted, right? It like it like back it went it went so far it like they became spoiled is the word I'm not spoiled like a child, but spoiled like a food. Do you see what I'm saying? And then they were cut off. And had they not been quote unquote slaughtered in that way, it would not have been a blessing for the rest of us. And if they had not gone through all those seasons. 
and experiences, which would be documented in the scriptures, we wouldn't have that to eat from. So I love everything you said, except I think, not except, but I think you can actually even take out the sentence of the idea of corrupt and all of that. You can take that out and your statement is still true. That if they have been fattened by the experience of the Holy Spirit living among them, mm -hmm. and then they were uh, slaughtered like sheep for the slaughter, and then look at the benefit that the rest of the world received, which is a relationship with the one creator God, which the rest of the world up until that point, I assume, was refusing. I see what you're saying. The only reason I added that, though, is when when I, in the analogy I was giving earlier is like, I don't perceive that Paul or Peter or Yeshua or any of the apostles when they were. When they were moving into righteousness, they were getting actually slaughtered and beaten and 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 nail right like they were getting beat down literally right and even killed right right the holier they got the more they got beat right whereas if you look at the jews it was the complete opposite yeshua didn't yahweh did not come in and, and ever hit them he never tortured them he never beat them he never cut them off when they were righteous he protected them he made their apples never corrupt he made their food last for the seven years when there was famine right he would totally protect them and put like a a hedge around them completely right but Christians have the opposite effect. So that's why I added the spoil. God didn't ever thrash them until they spoiled, they got spoiled. And they had they they had, had him so much. And then of course there would be like a one generation that would corrupt it. And then the next generation would be corrupted based on their parents or the grandparents, right? Yeah. And then that would cause God to have to come in and, you know, spare the rod, spare the child whole moment, but onto the tribes. So what I'm saying is, is it is different than Christians. Christians grow holier and righteous. They get thrashed more, I perceive, especially in the Bible. Whereas the Jews, if they maintain their holiness and righteousness, they were protected. When they stepped away from the Lord, he allowed them onto their, you know, minds, if you will, right? Yeah, yeah, I agree. I just, Do you understand I, my word I, I spoiled totally, now? Yeah, the, no, no, I, I agree that, that they absolutely did go spoiled. I just thought that... Uh, what I wanted to make, sh what I wanted to point out is that they weren't spoiled because of the blessings of God. True, Mary. They they became spoiled as they stopped being holy, and they started to look elsewhere, and punishment wasn't coming right away. So, in my opinion, it took several generations usually for them to get their comeuppance because the Lord had so much grace and tolerance for them, and He kept calling them back, and He kept sending servants, uh, the prophets, and the prophets were ignored. And finally, after sometimes hundreds of years, would the punishment come? So, my point is that all, all I was trying to say is like the the blessings of God didn't spoil them. It's the fact that they stopped living holy and walked away from God where they were spoiled. You know what I mean? Mm hmm Hmm. I know what you mean. I, yeah, that's a good point out, is that if I said that it was the fat, it was the blessings of the Lord that spoiled them, but it's like he poured out the blessings so thickly that, that they got fattened and the fat spoiled them, I believe is what I said. Okay. That... I believe that's what I said. If anybody wants to go back to the video after this and see if that's what I said, that, that, but I didn't. I don't think I said that the Lord spoiled them. No, no, the Lord. So, but just you, you, you. I, now I like your analogy a lot because the fat remaining on their bones mm -hmm. eventually would spoil them if they stop. If they, you know, again turned away. Um, anyway, minutia. But okay, well, let's keep reading. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was supposed to be a small soapbox, and even Mary says, Nathan's very small soapbox, making the... Marking yeah. this? Marking this, okay. <laughs> so, oh, marking this. I thought I was making this, like, yeah, not short at all. Okay. All right, where are we? R Vicky? No, Carrie, Karen, right? Yeah. Okay. You read. I think I read the last one. Oh. Um, Lynn, yeah? Didn't yeah, I? Matthew 22, 6. Uh, in reading this parable at first, I couldn't comprehend why the story took such a nasty turn. <laughs> To the point where the messengers bringing a lovely invite to a wedding actually were killed for doing so. An RSVP could have simply said, no thanks, <laughs> can't attend for whatever excuse they could make. But this group were motivated to kill the messengers. Pharisees and Sadducees and finally all the people who were laying out palm leaves before him the week before. To me, this is clearly the spirit of Satan motivating people to do the unreasonable and unthinkable. But then again, Yeshua knew this and used it to fulfill the plan of God for our salvation. 
And I'm under the persuasion that the messengers are that he's also saying the apostles and anybody else who brings the message is going to be killed. He's basically letting the apostles know as well. Yeah. You're in this with me, guys. Welcome to the club. Yeah. <laughs> what great news. Yeah. Um, the king sends the messengers and they get killed too. This is a good, a good time right here. Very nice. Um, is this the chapter where he says, I send before you? I send messengers before you, or is that a different chapter? I think that's a different chapter. This is the one where he sends the messengers. I think I know what you're talking about. I think it's a different chapter. Okay, okay. Because this, okay. Yeah. Um, well, you're talking about when he's saying, I sent you messengers and you rejected them. That's the one you're talking about, right? Uh, yeah, but it he... It might be this. It might, you could be thinking of this. Yeah. Uh... You want to find it? It's going to be down. Right. I think it's in the next one. I think it might be in the next one. Yeah. Let's just double check. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Cool. Uh, Vicky, Matthew twenty two ten. And those servants went out into the roads and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. At first, I was a little confused by this verse. Why would the good and the bad be invited? But then it dawned on me, everyone is invited. He came to save the sinners. In the following verse, the person who chose not to wear the wedding garment goes to hell for his unbelief and rejection of the Lord. It doesn't say the king rejected all the bad, only those who refused to put on the wedding garments. The king calls him friend. This kind of broke my heart. Yeshua loves this person, but he doesn't accept his love. This shows that God doesn't send people to hell, but because of their unbelief and rejection, they go there. He doesn't want them to go there. And Lynn says, so glad you pointed this out. Really good insight. And Mickey says, yes. No, Dina. I'm sorry. Dina says, yes. It also reminded me of the parable of the weeds in Matthew 13. And Karen says, yes, my heart broke too with Yeshua calling him friend. Yeshua suffered such rejection. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can't even think any of us can imagine what he felt. I'm going to sneeze. God bless you. Thank you. Um, well, there's more people talking about these scriptures. I was about to read them, but yeah. Yeah. Let's keep reading. Let's um, read them. Yeah. Uh... Gilda says in real time, I'm flabbergasted that I'm someone that God clearly allowed or chose to live in the end, endish times. Endish. I feel terrified some days just being a human and normal non-apocalyptic life. How am I cut out for this? Yeah, uh, exactly. I, I don't know if I, I don't know if there's any, I don't, I don't know if too many people who may feel otherwise. Maybe, maybe there's some that do. Maybe some feel I can survive anything. There's some rugged people out there. You know what I mean? But I'm certainly not one of them. I like my um, comforts. I like my creature comforts, and um, and I like lots of things comforting. And and so so the so That's the good. lots of things that are comforting. I <laughs> like them. I like creature know. comforts. I like and I like comforting things. And I like being comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Well, like just, Listen, if life is a pillow, I'm a happy man. Yeah. You know what I mean? If I can be comfortable, it's all good, man. <laughs> that ain't gravy. Really, really comfy couch. I like those things too. Yeah. Um. So Gilda, I'm with you. You're not alone. Is what you're not saying. alone. Um. None of us are. None of us can get through it though. No, just like nobody can rejoicely pick up a cross and, well, you know, walk and do it on their own kind of thing or willingly, right? That's not normal. Unless you're total like lunatic, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> you get some really <laughs> massive amounts of screw looses. But if you're sane uh, and uh, I'm making a joke, but not, you know, uh, yeah, then I think uh, the only way to do it is the Lord has to do it through you. And I think that's the key, Gilda. I think as long as we keep saying to ourselves, how am I, how am I, how am I, you're, you're going to be in what I call the danger zone. Yeah, we 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 have to change our dialogue to I trust that you will, Lord. I trust that you will. If you put me there, it's because I trust that you have you are going to allow me to have the strength to endure or to go through or to be what you want me to be in that. 
we have to strengthen that muscle because as long as we keep saying, how am I, how am I, how am I, we're not making room for the Holy Spirit to come in. We're looking at us. It's, it's a pride. And I'm not picking on you, Gilda. I'm, I'm, I'm sharing what, what I believe to be a really important truth, you know, because Yeshua, and the key to that for me scripturally is when Yeshua says, but not my will be done, but yours. So he acknowledges what his will is, that it's contradict or it's contrast to God's will in this situation in the garden when he's praying, right? And he says, but not my will, but yours. So Yeshua acknowledges his, and then he says, even though it's contradicting to my will, I surrender to your will, which is horrific for me. But he's basically saying, I trust you're going to get me through this. You're going to bring me through this. So... That's really important. I think that that's a massive key factor. And I think a lot of people do that sentence. How am I? How am I going to do this? How am I going to live? How am I going to behave? How am I going to do that? Yeah. I mean, uh, Gideon is a good example of somebody asking the same exactly. exact thing. Like, well, wait, Gideon hold, is great. hold on, God. Uh, I'm, you know, middle-aged, out of shape, never had Farmer a sword. Farmer guy who's I've, never done war. What? You yeah. want me to take out hundreds of thousands of Midians or something? What? Yeah. 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 So um, that's where you do the, did I get the right memo? Did yeah. I come to the right person? Did you guys get the address wrong? Yeah. Um, uh, oh, this angel's in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> he took this message to the wrong guy. Yeah. Vicky says, I read oh, this verse this week, and it fit perfectly. Isaiah 43, 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire, I will not be scorched. Uh, I'm will. sorry, you will not be scorched, nor will the flame burn you. See? Bam. Exactly. Yeah. Carrie says she was just re reading, uh, just read about Gideon to the boys this morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gideon has got to be at the top of everybody's favorite prophet list because he's so... Like unassuming, yeah. Un he's so glorious. Like, yeah, he's so like you know me. Where's my pillow? Yeah. I mean, not that he was pillowy, pillowy. Yeah, I'm pillowy. We're not saying but... he's fat, Lord. We're just... <laughs> Truly, don't upset nothing. Anything bad about Gideon, yeah, or anything he did. We love him and we we appreciate him. I'm not getting in trouble again. <laughs> I'm already in trouble perpetually, so I don't want to get into more trouble. <laughs> Say nothing bad about him. Okay. Um, Karen? Yeah, you want to read that? that one? I am? Yeah, Matthew 22, 11, 12, uh, 11 through 12. But when the king came to see the dinner guests, he saw a man there who was not dressed appropriately in wedding clothes. And he said, friend, how did you come in here without wearing the wedding clothes that we provided for you? And the man was speechless and without excuse. Matthew 22, 11 through 12. Understanding and learning of the Jewish wedding customs of the time helped me to be more impact, impacted by this verse. It was a custom of the father of the bride to provide wedding clothes for each guest who put them on before entering the wedding feast. If the father king is presenting our father, our heavenly father in the parable, then he has made provisions through Yeshua, robes of righteousness, that we must put on and humbly accept. This parable, I feel, holds a warning for those who treat the provisions of God casually, as the guy seems to. Was he unaware of the dress code? Was pride involved here? He seemed to accept and respond to the invitation like many who come to salvation, but felt it's okay to waltz in with his own clothes, his own righteousness, like many who, after salvation, will carry on to the trust in their own good works. There's a verse in Isaiah 4.1, referring to those who insist on wearing their own clothes. And seven women shall take hold of one man in that day, saying, We will eat your own bread and wear our own clothes. Only let us be called by the name. Take away your reproach. This is a sobering warning to me as a believer and one called to come before him humbly and work out my salvation with fear and trembling. Philippians 2.12. As the following verse reveals, it didn't bode well for this person. And then Lynn replies, this is really good. Thank you for providing the verse reference to tie it in. Very interesting. Indeed. I am in agreement. Good stuff. Yeah, this is really good, guys. Um... <clears throat> Yeah. Yeah. Sharon says, "Faith, if you make it, fake 
it to make it won't. <laughs> faith if faith you... it, you make it. Oh, fake faith. it to make it, it won't. Oh, right, right. Okay, thanks. <laughs> um you guys can't see i have good eyesight but his like no it's tiny print it's like super far away yeah his computer's super far away it's not like right here in front of us <laughs> yeah um, and i'm at an angle so if you're like nathan should learn to read one day if he's going to continue to doing this I, you know i just learned yesterday yeah completely well, honest. i was me maybe the day before maybe Okay. Um, Jennifer Connolly. Jennifer Connolly, Matthew twenty two eleven. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not a, on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I noticed how his eyes went right to this person uh, I, I noticed how his eyes went right to this one person. Was this the child of the wicked one mentioned below? Was this a forceful gathering of good and bad? I wouldn't think it, I wouldn't think the bad would go. What is the wedding garment? Seal on the forehead? Being in Yeshua, I always think of him as an encapsulated packet around me. <laughs> Sin? Righteousness as filthy rags? Matthew thirteen thirty eight, The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. Matthew thirteen forty seven Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. If so, if, if so be that uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 5 3. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Revelation 3 4. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Revelation 19 8. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. The divine wedding garments, is this a transfiguration garment of Jehovah's glory? Wash white as snow in the blood of Yeshua? Romans 3.9, what then, are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. Hmm. Well, Jennifer certainly, think, you know, Really did Circling a, it back. Yeah, really did a great job of finding references to garments and to the idea of how people are gathered and in, in how souls are gathered, I guess, in heaven. Um I mean I, I think yeah, I think the garment is a representation of one's sainthood. Um because it, it is mentioned revelation, it is mentioned a lot. White linens, a robe of white linens. Um, yeah. Okay. Gilda? Um, it was good, Jennifer. It was. Thank you really for bringing good. those scriptures together like that. Um, there's more about this, so we'll keep reading that, because I, I want to hear, I want to hear people's thoughts about some of this, but I'll wait, because they might be given. Go ahead, read Gilda. Everything, Gildo, everything was going well until Matthew twenty two eleven. Whoa, he didn't have on the right outfit and he ends up in hell? Clearly this doesn't mean his attire, but what exactly is being said here? The wedding garment was proven to this, provided to this man, yet he still didn't put it on. Hmm, I think it represents rejection of Yeshua's gift. I'm going to sneeze. Why? Gift of salvation. A covering was provided yet not used. Same goes for Yeshua's blood covering of humanity's sin. Many are called, but few are chosen. This is a deeper than deep. What does it mean to be called? What does it mean to be chosen? Is chosen equal to be saved? King equals Yahweh, son, groom, Yeshua, wedding garments, obedience to Yahweh. Many are invited equals all humans ever. Few are chosen humans who follow Yahweh. Furthermore, I feel as though the original guests were the religious, outwardly pristine folks. 
the people who were always questioning Yeshua and hating on him. And the new guests were people like the blood disorder woman who touched Yeshua's robe, the prostitute saved from being stoned, and the believing centurion with the sick servant at home. I could be completely and utterly wrong. I don't think you're wrong. I'm under the same persuasions. I don't think you're wrong. Maybe. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't think so either. Um and I think the conversation leading up to your comment ironically answered your question too. Everybody providing, you know, some insight onto the word chosen and called and so forth. So that's pretty cool that we kind of addressed that. Um, Jennifer says, I felt the Holy Spirit say to me this week, Jew and Gentile sin verse again. Was it Jewish leaders? Without garment, speechless. Um... I would say it was the Jewish leaders who didn't respond to the invitation. The other person that walked in without a garment, I'm under more of the, me personally, I'm under more of the persuasion of what somebody else said, which would be like a Christian, but based on, they, they just thought they could come in on in their own clothes. They could come onto the Lord in their own clothes, right? Their own righteousness that they had perceived. Like if you think of clothing as righteousness or holiness, right? They were like, well, I'm holy. Like, especially maybe the person had money. I mean, it doesn't say that, but think about it, right? Or maybe they, I don't know, maybe they had their favorite like soccer team or football team or jersey on, you know what I'm saying? They wanted to be like, yo, funny, not funny, but I'm saying like, no, no, I'm, I'm, they were I'm boasting actually, like they wanted I'm, people to see their tribe logo yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. colors or something. You get what yeah, I'm trying I'm to say? I'm smiling not because I think it's a silly analogy. I'm smiling analogy. because I think it's a really good analogy because... Uh, how many of us have put on the jersey of our favorite team or our favorite athlete and walked around happy and sort of as if we're doing something as if, good, as if we're we're somehow associated with that person or associated with those champions, and somehow we are just like them. We're basically living vicariously through them, so we're putting on their jersey on our back, and the call here is put on Christ's sort of jersey. Uh, exactly you. right you know and that was, that was, so the other thing i was going to say is the one thing that at least it hasn't been talked about yet and i was going to wait to ask if anybody found anything like this we know that the father provides the father of the bride provides the clothing for the everybody who attends right yeah or he pays for the wedding usually no but it was it's yeah. it is the custom of the culture then, yeah. right yeah, so yeah. my point is to say is that you know how like bridesmaids all wear the same color yeah well, what if the clothing was of a certain nature or style or color? So then it felt festive, like everybody was of one mind and one spirit. And if somebody came in and they weren't, they would stick out like a sore thumb, even if the clothes were super nice. It's right. not a matter of the fact that you have nice clothes or dirty clothes or whatever. I mean, that's the other thing. Somebody could come in super rich and somebody could come in super poor. But because the garment was provided, everybody was equal. Do you see my point? And if yes. you think about how Yeshua ordains us, or or uh, not ordains, uh, what's the O word? Uh, what is wrong with me? Anoints? You no. Know, um, anyways, put, clothes us. No, clothes us. There's a word for that. Anyways. Uh, Dresses? No. Puts clothes on us. I'm just going to say that. So something's wrong with me. I don't know what it is. My brain is farting all over the place. So, But he puts clothes on us, which is righteousness, and it makes us all his. We're all even. It doesn't matter for rich or poor. Right, if it's his, because he's what's significant. Yeah, you see, do you get yeah, my yeah, point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in a way, it's kind of like his jersey, and we're all yeah. wearing the same one. And if you're the one person in the room that's not wearing it, you it doesn't matter if your clothes are nice. You, right. You're sticking out like a sore thumb. Right. And you're also saying, I don't want to put, I don't want to put what you have chosen. Right. On me. So bugger off. Exactly. Uh, my, my, my style is better my, than yours. my my life my identity forget exactly my identity and how i am is is my my individuality yeah. is more important than your wedding gear here hmm. sir i don't whoever you might be oh god almighty yeah <laughs> right right yeah and 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 so the king goes the king goes friend what what have you done? Why why aren't you got the clothes? And he has nothing to say. That's the other thing. I, I really want I like that too, that he has nothing to say. Yeah, I want to hear you guys, and you specifically, and all of you guys, I want to hear your thoughts on the speechless part. Well, let's just keep I reading. Because I think it's very it's... interesting, but I, I think other people are going to mention, or may mention it, so there keep reading. There's yeah. more comments, yeah. By the way, there's like a lot of real-time comments that are, that are interesting. Um, 
Uh, Mono says, I think babies are all the same. I, fe I feel like when the babies are discovering, they do lovely things with their lips when they... <laughs> when they discover something. I think the Holy Spirit feels the same when we realize what he's saying. <laughs> Baby lips, okay. Um, okay, so John says, the wedding garment is the righteous deeds of the saints, keeping his commandments, Revelation 19.8. Mm -hmm. uh, Ricardo says, Find many, found many references about garments. The ones which called my attention were three, Isaiah 61, 10, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garment of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. And also Revelation sixteen fifteen, behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that was that blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see and they see his shame. And Colossians three ten and eleven, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Bam where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Bam, see? Ricardo. Doesn't that, doesn't that tie in with what we were just saying? Yes. Come on, see? Everybody um, is the same. There's no separation. I, I need to scratch my back because I want to- You scratch it. I want to- I'm going to scroll because there's so many comments right That was awesome, Ricardo. Thank you for that. Um. Here, unhide those. Mm -mm. You just like you just needed to stretch. That's what you needed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very cool. Okay, good stuff. Right. Then this is you, me. Okay. Or is this me? Ooh, uh, me. I think yeah. Yeah. Me, you. No, it's me. Go. Twenty-two, eleven. I know. I'm holding back. Sneeze. But when the king, I, only when I when I go Take to read four. though. Four. Okay. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw. Okay, so we had this part. I just don't want to keep boring everybody with this thing. Yeah. Okay, here we go. This affirms that receiving an invitation to God's kingdom does not guarantee inclusion. One must be properly clothed. Verse reference, Zechariah 3, 3 through 5. Now Jos Joshua was dressed in filthy clothes as he stood before the angel. The angel said to those who were standing before him, take off the, his filthy clothes. Then he said to Joshua, see, I have taken away your sin and I have put on fine, fine garments on you. Then I said, but put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him while the angel of the Lord stood by. Revelations 3.18. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shamefulness nakedness. Sh uh, shameful nakedness. And slave to put... Sal. Sal, thanks. And Sal to put on your eyes so you can see. Revelations 19.6-8. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters and like a loud peals of thunder, shouting, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Into the verse reference, although everything... Who, so this is now we're starting a commentary. Uh, although everyone who hears the gospel has been invited, and although many may claim to be in the kingdom, only those clothed with Christ's righteousness are actually presentable to God. Only those who are chosen will be present at the marriage supper of the Lamb, and the election does not depend on any previous status. This reminds me of the verse in Matthew seven twenty two: On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And he will say, take your leave of me. I never knew you. Yep. Vicky says, I love the references you referenced. The yeah. verses you referenced. Yeah, they were really good. Very yeah. important. Um, Think about how many verses have been referenced by six, eight, ten people. Like, do you see how different, like, do you see just, I know I'm being like Mr. Captain Obvious over here, but like, do you see how when everybody does it, there's like a energy to each of us. There's something in us that's causing us to Google or search in a certain vein, 
right? Because there's something in our soul that needs to be fed that way, right? And since the EBRT unlocks each and every single one of us, every word is a key that unlocks every single one of us. When we all come together, it's like we're closing all the gaps, right? The more of us that come together, the more people who do this work and participate, the more gaps that are being filled. Yeah. It's just amazing to see just tonight is a great example of how everybody coming together is contributing. Even if they're doing the same work, ironically, we've had people do the same work and come up with completely different passages. Right. And we're like at 20 passages right and now they all that apply. all reference to this. Yeah, yeah exactly. So like, could we all do this work by ourselves? The answer is yes. Would it be as fun? Would it be as educational? Would it be as absorbing? The answer is no. It's like God's design is so perfect in how we are commanded to fellowship and read the Bible. It's so perfect. So Amen. glory That's be awesome. to God for EBRT. Amen. Indeed. And how and how you guys are participating. Like it wouldn't understand too, this would not be the blessing it is if it wasn't for you who participate and leave your comments. Yeah. Like I, we're just reading and we soapbox once in a while, but we're just reading your comments. Yeah. Like you guys are you you make it. So if you're sitting there watching, God bless you. We're great that you're allowing us to be a blessing on you, but we would really appreciate it in the spirit of Yeshua. Appreciate it if you just contributed a tiny nugget because then you're closing another hole because you are uniquely you. The scripture speaks uniquely to you, even if you think it's not significant or radiant or mind shattering. The Lord speaks uniquely to you. And if you share that with us, we all get filled more. Amen. Very true. Absolutely true. Don't let the devil discourage you because that's what he wants. Exactly. The more of us, you, he keeps quiet, the less our holes get filled. That sucks. I don't like that. I personally hate the devil, but whatever. It's fine. Okay. You read the next one. Um, uh, Am I right? Yes. I'm 100% right. Okay. Um, I mean, I don't have to be. I'm just, you know, no, no, if no. I'm wrong, you can say so too. Listen, you're not wrong, not man. Not only off camera. You're not wrong. Oh, like every day. What? Um, <laughs> um, all jokes all jokes all uh jokes. susan susan davis says i think the speechless is that he did not realize the truth just like many that do not read the bible yet they think they can get into god's house by being a good person that god that god will give them kudos for their own successes and works mm -hmm. yeah like that like he's got nothing to say. What can he? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Go ahead. Jennifer's is good. Je Jennifer's saying, I'm staying at a hotel for work tonight, but you guys are so portable and make me feel like family and home away from home. Love this ministry. Well, we love you, Jennifer. Man, that is an awesome comment. That is awesome. Thank you, Jennifer, for yeah, sharing that. That's, that's beautiful. Super awesome. Um, Lynn says there's a lot. I had a ton of verses popping up even during sleep, but having COVID head, I can't keep up. Oh no. So uh, you're not feeling well, sis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that I'm not the only one that sits there and like lays in bed and gets overwhelmed with like passages. It's like, do, 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 do. and you're just like, oh, okay. Okay. I'll research that in the morning. Yeah. Right. Wake yeah. up the next day and like half of it's gone. So you got to like research all over again. You know what yeah. I mean? Only me? Okay. <laughs> no, apparently not. I know. That's Lynn, what I'm saying. Lynn's also doing it. Um, <clears throat> uh, Vicky, Sorry, says, Vicky says, it's unbelievable how in sync everything is tonight. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, it is kind of amazing, isn't it? What happens when you humble yourself? And yeah. We allowed the Lord to move in and do the work. Yeah. Huh? It's true. Huh? Yes. Huh? Absolutely. I'm going to keep doing that. You, I don't know why, but why you not? Can do you it. can do it. You can, uh, you can keep doing it because, you know, a man... Um, so Leo Levo, um, Matthew twenty two twelve plus Matthew twenty two forty six, and he saith unto him, friend, how comest thou hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Here we have a speechless man like in Matthew twenty two forty six, and no man was able to answer him a word. Neither durst any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. Bam. Um, this illustrates the power of Yeshua, of the Lord, because given by the lord to yeshua and all the verses about the fact that the lord has already won um these people who have nothing more to say are like crushed 
as it is said in Matthew 21, 44, whomsoever shall fall on the stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. Mm -hmm. Those who do not want to follow Christ, understanding that following him will make us stumble, and by this put on the wedding garment, will be crushed. Mm -hmm. And this is because, as said, as, as it said in Matthew 22, 41 through 45, Yeshua is highlighting that he is now in flesh, but always was and is and will be in spirit, and that he's sitting at the right of the Lord until the Lord will make his enemies his footstool. Bam. This is this is a little light that the Holy Spirit gave me, and that crowns a whole path guided by other little lights, resulting now in a huge light about being one with Yeshua. If I shut up with my flesh or my own interests, I can always ask and talk about everything, even my own interests, or how to get rid of, or 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 why it is there, and Yeshua will win, and Yeshua will win on it for me by leading the path to do it through his divine power. I share it because the feeling I get from it is like wonder, a miraculous discovery of love, and being in and with the Lord that is so huge, divine actually, that I cannot keep it for myself. Now, I know it is a step on a larger or, or, or going further plan that I rejoice in the Lord's love to explore and live. Wow. Well, if anybody just testified to why we are alive, even though it all is going to end, <laughs> yep. both either in our own lives, as everybody will die, mm -hmm. or in general, this, this, this phase of the world, uh, Leo just just beautifully testified to what is the reason um and that's great that's amazing it's amazing i i share it because the feeling i get from it is like wonder and miraculous discovery of love and being in and with the lord that is so huge divine actually appropriate wording for sure that i cannot keep it for myself now i know it is a step on the larger or a going further path that i rejoice in the lord's love to explore and live man like that's what i'm talking about that's here's what's really cool too what this is this is another thing with testimony right when you read that and you have those experiences and you think to yourself like i can't word it and then somebody's given the blessing to word it right or word it in a way like just so right. Yeah. You're like, okay, cool. I'm not alone. Yeah. Or, okay, cool. This is him. Yeah. Because right? I get that question all the time. Like, how do you know if it's from God? How do you know if it's this? How do you know? It's like, like, I don't know. Which is weird because like, I know when I know, but I don't know how I know. It yeah. just, I just know. Yeah. And it's like right here, this is, this is somebody else saying it, but in a different way. Like, if 1,000 people have the same experience and they all express it, one of us might hear one of them, just one of them out of 1,000 explanations. Maybe 999 won't land. But if the more of us share, we'll eventually hopefully find one that says it in a way that unlocks us or speaks to us or we vibe with that. You know what I mean? Like, th that to me is broken record, Nate. As t testimony is like, doing it's it's it reading the scripture is a thing but man testimony like isn't it so powerful when it's the scripture shared and then the person obviously rhetorical question but you get what i mean yep i'm telling you it's, uh, it's, this it's, is a bomb with the dot and the com yeah, afterwards okay double bomb. 1990s or early 2000s reference for the rest of you bomb.com and gilda points out something interesting too she says interesting right real time i've noticed the pharisees will also slink away silently when rebuked by hmm. yeshua when they don't want to answer him speechlessness so it brings me to think more about what the speechlessness in this case is if i love what you did there because you're pointing out well weren't the pharisees later on in this chapter speechless yeah why were they speechless well because they had no rebuttal he nailed them mm -hmm. right he totally disarmed their argument and so if they know what he's saying is something they can't rebut because the more they say the more in trouble they'll get the same thing here perhaps when when the 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 king goes hey how come you showed up here without the wedding garment it isn't the it's not that the guy doesn't know 
Mm -hmm. He suddenly knows full well. He knows full well what the garment is. He remembers when he was offered it in life. He remembered when the he, decision why he rejected the decision it. when he rejected it. He probably remembers full well the time he the moment he had mm -hmm. where he said to himself, nah. "Cool, uh, that's cool, <laughs> that's cool." But you know what? I don't need that. And God's gonna like me anyway. Look at he likes me. We like each other. King I like invited him. me in. Okay, I'm we're cool. I'm beer. cool with the king. All right, he, uh, we're cool. We're like we're bros. He man. bought a potato. Once we're bros, Dan. I don't. Awesome. <laughs> why, you know, I don't need this garment. He loves me anyway. We just riffed. <laughs> we did. It was good. It was good. <laughs> we have problems. <laughs> you won't. No, that was good though. Right. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, because yeah. he, he has to have that moment. Is he speechless because he doesn't know, or is he speechless because he knows he's guilty? He knows he's guilty. He has no way. He I'm I'm under that persuasion too, but I yeah. I, I I was waiting. Like I was like to be, and but I'm really glad you guys see. This is why we gotta keep reading comments. Yeah, this is really good. I'm persuaded he knew his guilt. Yeah, and I think and the other thing I think he's like he knows. First of all, it's a king. You can't argue with the king. Right. Where's your garment? What is he gonna say? Well, I didn't like the garment you chose. Right. Now he's off with his head. Right. Right. Now Anyways. he's like, what do I say now so I don't get into more trouble and get kicked out? Right. There's nothing, nothing he can say. So he just stays silent. Yeah, exactly. Like, it just would have gotten worse for him. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing, like what you're saying with, I, um, we picked up, we're, we're going to get there, but it was good that you tied it in, brother. Because that yeah. was like, that's what, I always hit the microphone. That's what I perceive it is because... And we'll get to it. I, I'll, I'll, I'll bite my tongue. I'm gonna, I'll, it's so good because I love, I love these passages. Twenty two. I love it. I guess no yeah. coincidence, right? It's twenty two. Yep. Be the light. Be the light. Also, I love the whole reference of a little bit of light with the other little lights and the big light come together. And you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That comment. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Leo. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, you guys are leaving great comments. Thank you. This is one of the most active nights we've ever had. It is. It's amazing. Thank you so and, much. And they're like, if, uh, like these are in these are enriching and mind opening comments, uh, heart opening comments. I mean, like Ricardo is saying here, he goes, technically you can enter by your works, but in order to do that, you have to stand in front of the white throne at the day of judgment and trust your works and not our Savior's works, and you will miss. And you will miss the wedding and the millennial also. Bam. And Ricardo adds, I really don't trust myself. Me neither. <laughs> me neither. That's Seriously. Why, that's why I don't want to speak on anything. You guys always hear me say in the videos, I'm like, I'm not saying whether somebody's saved or not saved. I'm trusting a whole... That that to me is like the slippery slope. Like if you can start role playing with if somebody else's behavior is like, are you not also then saying like what your own is? Even if you don't think you are. Am I yeah. making sense? Yeah. Like, I'm like, I have no idea. I'm just going to let the garment, the choice, Yeshua decide because he knows best and he's yeah. the righteous sayer, not me. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Sandy says, well, I was thinking of how important the symbolism of clothes is, like Yeshua's clothes and the cross, huge symbolism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's so good. Oh, we can say it. Do it. Well, you keep saying that I keep ruining because I keep talking about future th things. No, no, no. What? Well, I, you don't ruin. You don't ruin. No, you, you, just... you hate me and you say I'm a loser and I'm a oh, nobody. Wow. And I should go tuck myself under rock. No, that's totally a joke. He doesn't say that. I just, this is how we are in real life. I, I, we sass each other. So, so don't tell them this so, much truth. I, they, li they like it. So here's the thing. Oh. I'm just going to say, I'm not, I'm not going to even say gem in the pocket, but what is the garment at the cross what is the color of the garment at the cross that they take? And instead of ripping it, they lot for it. And then like, what's the symbolism of that too? What is the garment? Something that we should think about and just see if we can kind of discover when we get there. It wasn't, no, red was the robe they put on to mock him. And then they put on his old clothes. Yeah, we'll just get there. Okay. All Cause, right. Cause All right. Then it gives everybody a little researchy researchy to do. You can put it in the next video if you I want. I like the, the beginning. cliffhangers. How's that? I well, like the even Nathan though it's a head. I won't say nothing more. Just I get something. excited. But I just think it's cool because I'm like I, a child. I know. Me too. I am a child. I'm a man child. So I think it's cool because you're bringing that up, Sandy, and the clothes come off of Yeshua. He's naked. And then they see so much value in in, in his garment. That instead of tearing it, 
as they did his other garments, so they could have some garment, they keep one of those garments pure. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Is there mm. a thing to that? And then the way that they decide who got the garment wasn't by somebody had a whole bunch of money. It wasn't by somebody, you know, had the right answer to a riddle, right? They drew lots. So just, I think there's a lot of interesting notes there. I think it's super important what you pointed out, Sandy. So, wow. I'm, 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 I'm really excited to hear this when we get there. Because I, Me too. I, I look forward to seeing what everybody brings to the table. Yeah, It'll be yeah, a yeah, great yeah. discovery and revelation, I bet. Um, right? Yes. Oh, uh, Gilda says, when Yeshua told the guy to sell everything he owned and follow him, that guy was also speechless. <laughs> yeah, he just walks away. That's yeah. another great example of speechless, yeah. Yeah. Awesome, Justin. Testimony. I've been, I've had pneumonia, but would not go to the hospital, been very ill. You all who prayed for me, I'm doing much better. Back holy rolling for the Lord. God bless. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Our great physician, his name is Yeshua. Amen. By his 39 lashes, we are healed. Mm. Um, his eyes yeah. go right to the garmentless one out of the whole group. I would hate to be singled out like that horrible ending. <laughs> we could say that again. There's a lot of reasons to hate to be singled out in this situation, for sure. <laughs> Sarah noticed Alex casually moves microphone out of Nathan's reach. <laughs> That's what we're here for, okay? We're listen, here to help each other. Listen, just because I'm violent at the microphone doesn't, doesn't mean I should not be hurt. <laughs> there might be symbolism there too, right? Just beating on the mic. Move the microphone away from Nathan. Okay? Yeah, that's okay. No, it's really in your face though. It's like very it, close to it, your it, arms. It is. They they can't really tell from the camera angle. Yeah. It's like... It's like right up in your face. Hi, I'm Nathan Vila. <laughs> okay. Lindy says, me too. I know trust in myself. Um, Carrie Ann, and I feel like I'm being a clown in the comments. I should maybe go sit down in the back. <laughs> Listen, if, if clowning around is something that was uh, not beloved here, then uh, I could, I'd have to like stay mute the whole time. Mm, ditto. Um, uh mary says it's like yeah. when a parent catches their kid in the act of doing something wrong and the kid has the wide-eyed look of surprise at being caught and they can't think of anything to say yeah yeah that's what that's actually kind of how i imagined him he's like uh, yeah so like screwed <laughs> yeah like suddenly it, he realizes in that one moment the yeah. sum total of his decisions all poopery and it's like how do i fix it you can't Purple. I guess. Purple. Gil says purple. Gil says purple. <clears throat> next week. Bring it next week. We can open up the video with, with it, even though we'll get to it later again, but it'll just be, it'll be fun. Little fun thing. Why not? Right? Why not? Is that good? Mm -hmm. do, do you do you disagree? What? No, Are you what? persuaded this is a bad idea? What is bad? The whole have everybody look into it now since we're talking about the garment thing. I'm not persuaded. Not waiting bad. all the way to the, to, to the cross moment. I don't know. Whatever people want to do. Um... Sorry. Whatever the Lord wants to do, Alex. Uh, right. Forgive me. That's so, you're right. I surrender it to the That's Lord. True. That's true. If the no, Lord no, wants no. us to go search that, then just, so it shall just be. more sass. Vicky says, says, I was speechless when he convinced me to know the Bible or uh, was the truth. I just froze. Mm. <laughs> Lori says, Vicky, I'm speechless every time I read the Bible. Oh... <laughs> uh, Suzanne wants us to clown around. Yeah. You're welcome. Heavy topic could use a little laughter. Yep. All right. Okay. We got through the lifetime comments. Go ahead. We do. Friend. Which one? 20, 12, 14? Yeah. Lynn? Okay. Mm -hmm. For many are called, but few are chosen. I have several thoughts on this verse. First, from the beginning of all the parables in Matthew 21 through Matthew 22, 1 through 14, the parable of the wedding feast, it seems Yeshua was trying to give them a hint on who he is and also pointing out to them to recall all the prophets sent out from before, but also giving him a future prophecy of what is to come, which his disciples killed. The son of man gets killed and the future, the wedding feast, wedding throne. Second, the way I am understanding this is that everyone is called to find the way, the truth, and the life, share their testimony, and to share the gospel, servitude. The other is those that are chosen, anointed, 
for a special calling, but whether you are have a ministry like Nathan or being the blessing and loving on others, wherever you are at, it boils down to servitude. Both are anointed because it is not us who moves us in position, nor do we see the outcome for the most part, just like the disciples. They kept moving in order for spread to spread the good news. Amen. Yeah. That's all any of us can do. <clears throat> uh, you got live comment, Vicky's is Vicky says I meant convicted. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, there. Yep. Speechless when he convicted you to know the Bible. Convicted me yeah. to know the Bible. Oh, yeah. yeah. I just rose. Convinced. Convinced work, though, too. But that is interesting. Convicted, yeah. Yeah. Um, Yours is next, sir. Lynn, Matthew 22, 15 through 22. Uh, the parable of paying taxes to Caesar makes me wonder if they took this literal and are confused of this thought-provoking statement or if their eyes were beginning to open to the spiritual meaning of it. That is, we either bear the image of this world, Caesar, or we bear the image of Yeshua or Jehovah. Karen says, wow, a good question to consider. What image am I bearing? Yeah, that's really cool because that goes back to garment. goes back to what team jersey are you wearing? Um, yeah. Yeah. Who are you representing in this world? Ooh. Yeah. Deep thoughts. Yeah. Should entire bible read through <laughs> let me see something real quick we're like halfway right now i don't know let me see i don't know scroll it a little bit a little bit. yeah we're a little over halfway okay let's finish uh 22 to 22 okay this um, one let's do ricardo yeah should i you want to read you, I read? you read yeah okay if you don't mind matthew 22 15 22 paying taxes to caesar situation when Pharisees, this is Ricardo, when Pharisees, disciples, and Herodians came to Yeshua, it says they came to try to entangle him in his own talk. The irony I felt when I checked that the Greek word translated as talk was indeed the Greek word logos, word that describes Yeshua. It would be impossible to entangle the word with words. <laughs> Yeshua called them hypocrites, stage players in Strong's definition. They call him master when they do not consider him they, their master. They call him true and claim Yeshua taught the way of God when they think of him as a blasphemer. There are several cross-references all, all over the Old Testament about this kind of situation in Psalms, Proverbs, Isaiah, and even Jeremiah. But the one reference which highlights more for me is Ezekiel 33, 30 through 31, because Ezekiel is called all the time by Jehovah, son of man. It says... Also thou, son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses, and speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from Jehovah. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goes after their covetousness. <clears throat> Yeshua asked them, which was the image of a coin, a denarius, and what does it say? And because Caesar's image and name, I guess, was there, Yeshua stated that this was not from God, same as when Yeshua said, none is able to serve two lords, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will hold to the one and despise the other. You're not able to serve God and wealth, this got me thinking about the superscription in dollars, which says, in God we trust, for I found myself asking, is this not a wicked doing? Well, interesting. Let's not get off on that. Let's not get off on the uh, exploring the imagery of the dollar bill, because we'll be here all night long, and we won't come up with happy things. But um, Sandy Vicker says, if it's in the Bible, there's definitely something to it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> definitely, definitely is. Yeah. Let me just check some real quick. Okay, let's let's go ahead. I know I know we're moving at a snail's pace here, guys, but I hope that this whole experience is enjoyable for you. So, I believe it is. So, let's go ahead and pick up next week. We're going to be at Matthew twenty two twenty nine. Um, and if you guys want to do the research on that garment thing, you can add it here. I know we'll address it when we get there too, but just in case we for, like, we don't remember to bring this full circle. So why not do it now? Right. Um, uh, yeah. So we appreciate the comments. This has been the most variety of people who have commented live 
I think we've ever had. And it has been super rich and super blessed. So thank you every single person who's been here with us tonight and taken the time to comment and participate. I'm like so happy right now. I can't even tell you guys. Oh, yeah. This has this has truly been a blessing and it has felt a little different. Not this is not anything against our previous EBRTs, which were blessed and amazing. It's just after what we discussed in the past several weeks, this feels somehow blessed by that. So um real quick Susan. i'm gonna share something real quick on that thought yeah i can't explain it but i'm just gonna say it and i hope this doesn't offend anybody i mean no offense but i'm just stating because i'm wondering if anybody else feels this i feel that this video tonight is cleaner that's all i'm gonna say i feel like a a, a, a lighterness and not because everything was dark before i mean like a lighterness in our like there's less between us and therefore cleaner that's why i mean by it. like like there's just clearer. more flow yeah. uh, more yeah, flow and clean yeah like this is just how i feel so i don't know if that speaks to anybody but if it does then that's great i feel that way too do you i do is that kind of weird it's weird i mean but it's I, not weird when you think about the conversation right that, right it's not weird yeah and i and i am i'm going to say because it's my cliche line and i say it too much anyways but i have to i am persuaded and based on my experience i believe that is, we all continue as a body of Christ to to humble ourselves, surrender ourselves, and not make it about our ego. I believe that the, that if you are feeling this cleanliness in this, that that kind of clearness um, in this, it's going to increase significantly in this body of Christ, and there will come a, a movement of the Spirit within that clearness. So where 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 once was something, now it's cleared. The Lord fills that gap. So. I'm just going to speak that out there because that's my persuasion. So, hallelujah. Amen. I am persuaded with hallelujah. you. Um, Susan Harris, we got your comment. We'll... Yeah, it's it's about... Uh, you want to read it now since it's about that one? Sure. Uh, yeah, we didn't want to miss your lifetime comment because it was on... On this. On, the, on, on that um, one we're talking about already. Yeah. Um, the passage. I can say that. I can speak. Whoa. Hold on. Oh, no, you guys are awesome. Okay, okay. don't uh, leave just yet. Hold on. Don't leave. Susan Harris says Roman money had the same. <clears throat> oh, oh my goodness. Hick up. <clears throat> Roman, take, two. take two. Roman money had the Caesar's image on it. It was a way of advertising who was in charge. It was charged. It was changed when a new Caesar took over as a way of announcing to the far reaches of the kingdom who was now in charge. I believe this is uh on meaning of the render unto caesar's what is his this reminds me to stay focused on my king and not the kings of this world come on preach absolutely it. Yep. hallelujah you um, guys are blessed and uh um mary says yes i think it was helpful that you and alex have been willing to authentically share that's what makes it clean well hallelujah i agree uh then then all we can ask is more of that lord amen um uh i agree 100 yeah. um but also with you guys oh uh, you guys yeah exactly because your sharing is really what i mean that's the greater number mm -hmm. <laughs> this is this is just two guys there's dozens and dozens of you out there and your sharing is the greater volume it's the greater content we need it we want it people need it people want it amen um uh thank you for the sweet comments here at the end and we appreciate yeah it we much. really do very um, nice of you guys and we uh, will make sure to unhide any comments so if you guys are thinking we're hiding you we're not it's just facebook doing its thing again it's hiding for some reason sharon says thank you it's 3 a.m in england would not miss it for the world i do try every wednesday always blessed here hope to bless also well, god bless you sharon nice thank you sharing. so much thanks for See, this comment right there lets us know that the Lord is doing a powerful work. Everywhere. That it's not just confined to a room somewhere. It's actually worldwide. Exactly. Um, and it doesn't matter the numbers. What matters is that it is available. Like, you know, all are called. Exactly. For everybody. <laughs> exactly. Hallelujah. Um, wow. Yeah. Hallelujah. I Hallelujah, could do this guys. for hours. So could I. This yeah. is something, as you know, we talking about the lord and fellowshipping with you guys and talking about the bible i could do for hours amen if i didn't have to pee or eat i'd just be autopilot let's just talk about all the time right oh yeah that would be quite amazing 
I'm, I'm no filter, Nate. Be blessed, guys. <laughs> Be the blessing. Talk to you soon.